Danny, when you look at the chart here, and we're talking about Qatar non-stop, mm. it, it would seem. Incidentally, uh, everybody listening in talk sport later on, it's James Madison is the England player you're going to be hearing from. He's going to be addressing the media later on this <laughs> afternoon. Well, I'll tell you what, one thing Madison can do as well is play his talk. I know. There, there is Decent a na- speaker. There's a narrative behind this that, they, that despite Southgate picking him, he's not entirely confident in him. So it's interesting that he's the first one out of the bag. Yes. To do an interview. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. Um, Danny, as I said, Premier League sides with most players at the World Cup. You know, you would think, logic would tell you, the more players you've got out at the World Cup, the more disadvantaged you'll be when the season domestically resumes. Or will you? Manchester City have 16 players there. United have 14 players at the tournament. Chelsea, 12. It goes right down to Leeds United with three. Southampton, Bournemouth and Palace have two. And yet, you say, the more the merrier. I think you're at an advantage the more players you have at the World Cup playing regular competitive football because what you're doing is you're creating the norm. You're, you're, players normally in a season play throughout the whole year, as you know. We don't have a, a winter break um, and you don't have to do another pre-season and keep, get yourself fit again. If you've got nearly all of your squad staying at home six weeks without playing competitive football... You have to manage their training and try and build them back up to an intensity level that's very difficult, let me tell you, to try and find again Mm. when you've got your rhythm once. It's a bit like having an injury. You know, you have to then rebuild yourself back to... And and this is why sometimes you see players pre-season coming back and taking a while to get going if they've had a longer break than others, for example. Yeah, but Danny, let's say for the uh, argument's sake, and this is me saying this because I'm Scottish, let's say England get to the semi-final and go out. Yeah. The mental effect and the toll that will take on those players when they come back to immediately I think resume a domestic season. I think season. that's a myth. I don't, I don't see a big mental block on players because they, they lose a game. They, they get back to the club and they crack we, on with it. We the, see mental hangovers in football all the time. You do sometimes, but not, I, I don't... I, I think an excuse more often. Yeah, that. I think so. I think it's just finding some... Most players, most players physically will come back better if they're playing regular competitive football. Physically, yes. Yes, than, than having a six-week break. That's Now, there is a, there is an argument to say somewhere near the end of the season there might be some detrimental problem, you know, something because of detrimental problems because of that. I, I don't see the mental thing as being a big deal as people make out to be. You're losing a football match. Then you go back to an environment that's very different than the one you've come from where you have different goals mm. and different things to achieve whether it be avoiding relegation getting into the Champions League winning an FA Cup winning a Champions League whatever it is yeah. you quickly switch to that it's self-preservation you don't sit around in your nice house or your apartment at the training ground of Newcastle or Liverpool and go Putting oh that semi-final I wish, I wish we'd have got through on pa- oh dear well conversely let's see for talking sick I think that's quite England a refreshing win it. Uh, let's, let's, it's, it's a refreshing outlook but I, but I do think that what will happen is if teams don't achieve things as a result of coming back from the World Cup and certain players haven't hit their straps it'll be used as an excuse because I think everything in football that you haven't yeah. got everything yeah. in football that you don't have and the, is the reasons why you aren't successful rather than pointing the finger back towards yourself well, let's say England win it let's say they win it yeah. okay. and let's it's not inconceivable fancy, yeah. uh, Arsenal have 10 players at the World Cup in Qatar yeah. How how easy or otherwise will it be for those ten players to come back and get their minds on the job? That's more dangerous than losing, winning the World Cup. There you go. Yeah, because I think yeah. I think if you win the World and Cup, and I get that, I, understand I think it. if you win the World Cup, you get that that feeling right. of euphoria. And so we've just spent an hour on the show banging on about how important the, important the Premier League, how it <laughs> dominates everything, how everyone's missing it, how everyone will be looking forward to it coming back. Yes, yes. And now we're going to make an argument that says that when they come back, they're going to be disillusioned by playing in it. Of course they're not. No, 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 no. It's a, no, huge, I'm not, no, no, no. It's I'm a not, huge game. Nobody's change. saying they're going to be disillusioned. Well, or not disillusioned, but not necessarily motivated by it, or, or out of sorts because they've done the it's, ultimate high. It's not a lack of motivation. It's a simple case of comparing one thing to another. So I think if you lose... Mental approach. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so if so, you so, lose... So on, the, on one side, you'll argue that the mental approach doesn't detract from it if, you, if you've knocked it out. On the other side, you'll say that the upside of a mental approach will detract from it. Only temporarily on the basis that you're in a euphoric situation mm. that you've never been in before and yeah. you tend to celebrate a little bit more and forget what your next thing is. You like that 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 amazing feeling that will come okay. along well, once in a lifetime. Well then sign a bunch of Scottish and Welsh players because they'll, well, never, exactly. get, they'll never get that. But you know thing. what I mean? If you if you were in England playing you won the World Cup, I think you'd be entitled probably to indulge you a little bit and then forget your next Premier League game in the back of prepare in the normal way because okay. you, that that's all. So Erling Haaland isn't going. Yeah. So by your logic, he's gonna struggle to restart. Correct. Domestically, yeah. yeah. Do you honestly believe that that he will? Well, look, I can't. Every player is is different physically. The majority I played with 
n- nearly all, but the huge majority of the top players I played with, and even lesser, but younger, they they need games to find rhythm. Very few players could have a few weeks off, even if they're doing their bike work and fitness work and running and all that, without intense football, competitive football. Yeah. They found it very hard to hit the, the it's ground being, running. It's called being match fit, isn't it? Yeah, it's called <laughs> being match fit, which you can't get creating friendlies on the training ground. Yeah. You know, if Palace have a friendly against uh, Watford, which, yeah. you know, the, all the lads left and they have a... You stay out of trouble. Yeah. Sure, You don't sure. push yourself to the match. But so if when England, you, England go deep in this tournament, as many of us expect them to do so... When they come back and yep. it all restarts, are you not just kicking burnout down the road? You're ki- kicking that can down the road. No, because, because what, come April, what? they will be done. Well, let me get this right. No? The average, the average team in a tournament is going to play four games over a six-week period. A winning team is going to play seven. seven. Are we seriously suggesting, for the purpose of this nonsense, that they're going to be burnt out because they played seven games over six weeks? Now, come on now. Come in a on. World Cup environment, Simon. Well, so what? Where the stakes could not be higher. Yeah, these are the top of the... And they're Mentally. The top, and well, these, Danny's done it. And these are the elite of the elite, right? Yeah. So the elite, this is what happens when you put the elite into play. They operate at an elite level. The mm. best players play a similar amount of games every season and, and all at high, under high, high pressure. There will, be, there will be somebody who near the end of the season gets an injury who's played in the World Cup and someone goes, he's played too many that's games. that's the reason why, yeah. But now we've got five subs. Premier League, great. Yeah. You see teams rotating every yep. week. Exactly right. No one's really playing any more games now than they have for the last five years they won't the numbers are similar so the World Cup comes in and you're right only a, only a select few are going to play six or seven games the rest of them are four or five mm. and I think for example if you see Man City I don't know the fixture off the top of my head if you see Man City in late December early January play Southampton Bournemouth or Palace or Leeds who've got all, none of their players playing competitive football, I'm telling you now, that United team, City team and Chelsea and Tottenham, those who've got the most stuff. away, they will be out the blocks fast. And those down the bottom, those four or five teams who have got no competitive football for six weeks, they are going to struggle when the season starts. Uh, the, the season restarts. Leeds, Everton and Chelsea, the first Bournemouth, three games Palace. back for Manchester City. Leeds, Leeds Everton, Everton and Chelsea. Just three wins. So... What they're looking at there, and of course in the, in the, they've got that Carabao Cup tie, have they not? Nine, Just days they're, after they're they looking get back at nine to play points. Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. They're looking at nine points when yeah. they get the when they get the sixteen players back from Qatar. To be honest, they'd probably look at nine points with with irrelevant in the World Cup because of how good they are. So it's yeah. probably a bad example. But I yeah. think City, when you see them come back as United with all their players who've been playing in the World Cup, they'll just carry on. Why is it when Scotland come back after only playing three games, they're shattered? Because I've been that chasing, be the, because I've been well, chasing the ball. You mirror in front of yourself and work that out for yourself. Thanks very much. Look at your do, fortitude. I'll do, I'll do that during this next commercial. I, I kind of shot myself my Scottish foot there, didn't I? Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.